स्पॉटलाइट कैप्टन वसीम प्लीज अरे कैप्टन सती कुमार क्या कर रहे हो <laughs> सी और सी एम आई 
thank you all for joining in today's lecture meeting on a very interesting topic mooring ropes basics and recent innovation the speaker for today we have mr kishor garda vice president of garware kishor garare is uh, is having more than 25 years of experience with multi spectrum end user and a bits planning graduate before we start i would request all our esteemed members to kindly mute your mic so that there is no interruption i will now welcome our chairman captain basim to say a few words come in sir thank you captain sasi kumar uh i would just like to welcome mr kishor darda vice president of garware technical fibers we have always been doing many technical lectures and all that but he is something we use on board and he is going to talk about that what we use the product itself and more than the product he is going to talk to us about the innovation so we are all looking forward to listening to him and i welcome all our uh, kishor darda is the vice president R&D Garware Technical Fibers, having more than 25 years of experience with multi-spectrum end users, is a BIS Pilani graduate. Uh, kindly welcome, Mr. Kishore Darda. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Captain Sasi Kumar and uh, Captain Basin, and all of you for taking out the time. Uh, it's really an honor to be present here. and uh, present it to all the master mariners uh, okay uh, have been on board ship only twice and on the tug once so i don't know if i will be able to do justice to the extreme audience here but i'll try my best to do the things and thank you for the kind words and uh, the opportunity so there is uh, some setup happening here uh, give us a minute and we'll start Okay. Yeah, what? He's not shared. Can he? Oh, that is can he share? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Not that. Uh huh. Run like this. Yeah. Okay. So, one one slide. I will show you. I will full screen. Okay. 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 Let's proceed. Then. Great. Uh, so, uh, I hope uh, I am just doing a check. My voice is audible properly, and the screen is also visible properly. Yeah, perfect to go. Good to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, so my topic for the day is mooring rope basics and uh, recent innovations. So I will take not more than uh, four five minutes to go for the. Uh, it's not working. It's not working. Just just one minute. Sorry, there's a technical glitch. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So then, it's on the side mode. Working.
Yes, Pat. No. No. Thank you. Okay. The screen is not changing. It changes with just yeah. If you see here, you go to the next screen. Go to the next screen. Yeah, let's see. Okay, okay, great. Uh, but, then, go to the next one. Okay. Uh, Captain Sasi Kumar, if I can disturb you, uh, what do you see on the screen right now? Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, we will, uh, don't go on a slide. You can go on this way better. Let's go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Introduction to polymers. I see okay. that. Okay. Thanks. Third slide. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, great. And uh, some technical glitch here. Uh, so, how do we do? But the audience here can't see what I'm presenting. Yeah. You can go to the next slide. Uh, no, Captain Sushikumar, there's a technical glitch. Uh, the audience here is seeing something different and what you are seeing is something different. Uh, so we're just resolving it. Just a minute. So you can go before the uh, PC and you can uh, present from there. No. Just sit next. Yes, and next. Okay, great. Okay, all three. All three. Don't disturb this. Please go ahead. Do it this way. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for this technical glitch. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to present today is all the synthetic ropes made up of multiple polymers. So, uh, just to give a brief, this is all plastic engineering. Uh, ethylene is a single molecule and when it is polymerized by a company like say Reliance, okay, then it becomes polyethylene and there is a polypropylene and this is all what goes into making a rope, okay. So there are multiple polymers used for ropes, polyethylene, polypropylene, the most common one is polypropylene. Some of them are also using nylon and polyester. And now a blend of polypropylene and polyester. This is what is most in vogue. Okay. Now, after a certain period of time, now these are very commoditized polymer, if I can call it like that. Okay. The more common polymers or more advanced polymers now in youth are HMP. Uh, the most popular dy uh, brand name is Dynema. Okay. So I have also worked with Dynema for five years, DSM Dynema, and I'm working with Dervare for like almost 25 years now. Okay. Vectran and Aramides, they are uh, advanced version of polyester and nylon. Nylon is polyamide, but everyone knows it as nylon. So I've just put it nylon on the screen. <coughs> okay. So each of these polymers vary on different physical parameters, tensile strength, density, elongation. Okay. So there are pluses and minuses of each of the polymers. Okay. I will spend some time here. I will start from the right hand side, which is nylon. 
very good in strength very good in elongation but all of this is at dry condition yeah. the moment it becomes wet it loses strength and with prolonged wetness it becomes stiff okay so though the elongation is good stiffness is a uh, back parameter okay then comes polyester again very good strength very good melting point also but it's a multi filament structure so it has its own uh, disadvantages polypropylene floats on water unlike both polyester and nylon uh, and therefore it's very good for a mariner right however the strengths are comparatively lower than nylon and polyester but it has almost inert material no acid no alkali can damage it but the melting point is also comparatively lower so what is most common uh, material right now which is in use is polypropylene and polyester combined together or blended together that is the most common uh, material which is being used now so harnessing the best of both worlds we can say like that okay. polyethylene uh, not much used especially for the shipping applications because it will creep creep is under a static load it will just keep on elongating okay and which is not good for any shipping load so moving on to the rope making process the first <coughs> on the left hand side top is extrusion that's where you take the chips put it into a extruder heat it up and make it a tape out of it these tapes are then twisted together that's the second process the third is making the strand individual strand so what am i saying here is this individual uh just checking if my video is visible here okay this individual is called a strand okay and when i put it all together it's called a rope okay so these are uh, typical rope making machines and we have multiple of them in our factory and i'm sure most of the rope manufacturers have multiple of these machines okay so when a rope manufacturer is asking you certain questions these are uh, some terminology which you use yarn strand twine cord or rope cord or rope are used almost inter alia okay and there are multiple constructions of the rope three strand rope so if i have three of them twisted together 1 2 3 that's a three strand rope i can also look it from my side okay the second is a four strand rope what happens in a four strand rope is it's more rounder okay however the strength is lower okay so each variety has its own pluses and minuses eight strand rope which is the most common one used uh, by the shipping uh, industry like this it's also called as 2 by 4 because two strands are taken together and four such pairs are there so eight or 2 by 4 whatever you can call it then there is a 12 carrier rope which is rounder but then it has a core in between okay and there is a braid on the rope so i can do a basic rope then i can cover braid it so that the main core rope doesn't get damaged for abrasion or etc the top braid is more of a sacrificial this is how a three strand rope will look like so if you can see here the marker yarns uh you can see some different color yarns on the bottom picture and they are repeating after the third version 
Okay, so that's a three strand row. And this is an eight strand row in picture. This is the braid on braid row. So the inner core is essentially the strength member. The outer core is just for protective jacket. <clears throat> it becomes very important, especially when you have a very high performance fiber row. When I say use an HMP, it's a very, very costly row. Right? I don't want it to get upgraded and damaged. It's a very costly row. So I take a protective jacket for that. Okay. So it's all on one screen, uh, all the varieties of ropes which are used. Okay. The reason I show all of these varieties is you will be as a master mariner and when you go on vessels, you will be offered with multiple varieties of ropes. Okay. But you have to see what is best suited for the application. A three strand rope, very good if you have to tie something, etc., etc. Okay, but if you have to go for a very big diameter, then under certain pressure it will tend to open up like this, or I also call it hockling. Okay, this term is called hockling. If I take a four strand rope, it will be a lot rounder than this, but there is a core inside which is hollow. And therefore, the strength is lower. Okay. If I go for an eight strand row, very stable row, because it's going both the directions, the yarns are going in both the directions. So, very, very stable row. However, the negative point is it's not a rounder shape, it's not a smooth surface. So, some of the yarns tend to upgrade more, and some are not so much okay if i go for a 12 strand row it's a quite a round row however again the issue is there's a hollowness inside if i go for a jacketing very good it will protect my inner row with the outer jacket but i'm adding weight to the entire thing so depending on the application Depending on the requirement, we will have to go for a right property of the rope. And that's why I'm just trying to cover what are the different type of ropes. Uh, I'm sure most of you have handled all of this, but uh, just as a quick recap. Okay. Two very important properties, breaking load and elongation. But it's very important that we test it in wet condition. Okay, because multiple times, and I have been visiting multiple customers uh, always, nylon ka elongation both a hai. Right? But that's in dry condition. Okay, so this is something which we should understand. <coughs> Polypropylene, polyester, hardly any strength loss in wet condition. Okay, and we are talking here all of marine atmosphere, right? So therefore, it has to be very good uh, in wet condition, especially in the marine wet condition. Now, these are two very important parameters, fatigue and creep, especially fatigue. Why fatigue is important? Because it's very rare that my rope will be loaded to the breaking strength on the sea, very, very rare, right? Most of the time, rope will go back and forth like this, etc., etc., right? And this is what is causing the damage to the rope. When I, when the rope is going back and forth like this or over a sheave like this, what is happening here is the yarns are getting abraded over each other, right? And this is what is the most common failure mode for the rope. Okay. And thank you uh, to OCIMF. And I'm sure some of you must have given your inputs when OCIMF made its guidelines. And fatigue has now been a very prominent feature included 
when the OCMF guidelines have come into work. And especially with the MEC4 guidelines, it has become even more prominent. The first version had only the straight line fatigue called as TCLN. Now also the bending fatigue is uh, covered, which is very important because most of the ropes go on sheaves. Okay. So multiple applications of rope apart for shipping. So I'll come to the topic of the day, which is shipping ropes. Two big applications, mooring as well as towing. And within mooring ropes also, multiple applications, brace lines, spring lines, half forward. Okay. Very important to note, please do not do mixed moorings. Okay, when I say mixed moorings, it could be of two varieties. One is different materials getting moved, like a steel and synthetic being used together for mooring. The elongation properties are different. Yeah. Now there could be an argument. The HMP ropes and steel wire ropes, they have more or less same elongation. Four to five percent. So why can't I use them together? Okay. So Mahila steel wire will have a sag of its own because of the weight. A HMP rope will not have. Okay. Uh, just uh, doing a check if my video is uh, visible. The steel wire will bend like this when it is moved because of the self weight. There will be a sag. A synthetic rope will not have much sag, right? So though the elongation is same, the they are beha beha <coughs> sorry, behaving differently, okay? And therefore the synthetic HMP rope will have a lot more load on it than a steel wire, okay? So an earnest request, uh, please do not uh, do a mixed moving, okay? Should I stop? Please continue. I just check on the camera. Sorry, it's about that. That's what I'm wondering what. Okay, so you can. Uh, okay. Ooh. I'm just. Uh, looks like the people who were on the virtual screen could not see what I'm trying to show. Okay, so just repeating the steel wire and HMP. Yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, gentlemen, sorry for that uh, glitch. And uh, while the. I'm just repeating my point. While the steel wire and HMP ropes have more or less similar elongation. Steel wire will have a sag like this because of its own self weight, whereas an HMP rope will be more or less straight. So technically, though the elongation is same, the ropes will behave differently. The moorings will behave differently and therefore uh, there could be an issue. So earnest request not to do a mixed mooring. So now it's okay. now it's not changing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, gentlemen. Actually, we did a dry run uh, before this, but some of the settings have got altered. Sorry for that. Are you able to proceed further? Yes, please. I, I can do that, but I don't know if the gentlemen are able to see the screen now. 
Uh, Mr. Kishore. Yes. Uh, you can do without the slides. Go ahead and we will share the slides to our members and we'll upload on the website. Let's continue. Yeah, but then, you know, uh, people will not be able to relate what I am trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I hope now everything should be clear. Okay, is it okay? Yeah, just, just the next. Oh, Relax. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so while uh, we did all of these ropes, now I'm moving to the innovation part uh, of the presentation. Uh, so we went to multiple uh, master maraners like you. Okay. So the three big things which came out, and they are more or less interlinked. Can we email the people? I will share from there. It's too bad. Uh, uh, I'm not sure it will be get. Uh, Okay, fine. So the three big things which came out and more or less interlinked was can the weight of the ropes be reduced because it's too heavy and too bulky to handle. Okay, so this was the most important voice of customer which came out. Okay, so what we did was. Started working on the uh, material. Okay. So if you see all the rope manufacturers somewhere in late 70s and early 80s went with the basic polypropylene rope. Okay. Somewhere in late 90s, everyone came up with a high strength polypropylene. Okay. Garware brand is Maxima. Some of them have polysteel. Some of them other brands, right? Around 2002, around that time, came the mixed uh, hauser types. Maxi Flex. Maxi Flex. Uh, some have the brand Delta yeah. Flex. Some have B Flex. Okay. It's essentially a mix of polyester and polypropylene, right? However, because it was a 50 50 uh, combination, the ropes sank which many of the master mariners didn't like. So what do we do? We reduce the polyester to 25%, between 20 to 25%. We could harness the advantage of mixing polyester and uh, polypropylene, but still keep the ropes floating. Okay, But these were not good for towing applications. So it got very clear that the 50% polyester mix ropes went for towing. And the 25% polyester mix went for right. mooring applications. Okay. Then came HMP, the master fiber. Very high strength, as good as steel. Okay. Our blend is uh, platina. There are multiple manufacturers. Samsung has Amsteel Blue. Uh, Dynamica has its own blend. Everything. Right. So when we went for this. Uh, voice of customer and in 2010 onwards we developed this high strength x2 fiber okay and very proud to say and then indian rope manufacturer we are the first one to do that in the world okay. and touch wood it's like almost 10 years now and till date uh, no one has been able to imitate or copy that so there's a pure Indian innovation. We are very proud to present you that. And purely because of the voice of customer. Because when we went to all the master mariners, it was so strong a voice that we had to do something about it. You know? So within this X2 is the master fiber. Then what we did was the base ropes, which we did. Then we did a delayed snapback and a break indication for enhancing safety. 
for certain applications, low elongation was required, very low elongation. So we did a very low elongation probe by making it a special process. And where an abrasion resistance is required, we could actually coat the rope. Okay. Now, a base polyolefin fiber, which is polyethylene and polyester, I cannot paint it. There is no way it can be painted. It is inert material. The paint will just peel off. Any coating will peel off. So the innovation was a process to modify the surface of the material here and then make the coating stick to it. So that is the innovation which was brought in here. Okay. So the quick recap what we uh, what the innovation is downsizing and in the process of downsizing and this was what we uh, heard it was not a very strong voice of customer but we could see now everyone is talking of fatigue at OCM we was talking of fatigue everyone was talking of fatigue so we thought we should do a better fatigue resistant rope and that's how the better TCL value came in and obviously the safety is also important. So the lower snapback rope came in. So just to give a perspective, the regular polypropylene rope, way back when it started in 80s, it was 76 millimeter for the breaking strength of say approximately 68 metric ton. Then came the polystyrene or the maxima type of groups. It went down to the 574 kilo row coil went down to 407 kilo. And the latest version of the innovation ropes, it's only 360 kilos. And the diameter reduction, 76, 64, 60. Okay. But these are all more or less the uh, common available uh, fiber ropes. I'm not talking here of the high modulus HMP type of ropes. The second thing is fatigue, okay? And as I said in my earlier thing, it's all about tension fatigue. The ropes going back and forth, back and forth. And therefore the yarns getting damaged on their own, okay? So the OCMF, there's a test. You take the rope, load it to 50%, bring it back to 10%. 50%, 10%, 50%, 10% for a 1,000 cycle. Same row, you continue for 60%, 10%, 70%, and then 80% until the rope is broken. Okay? And all along, the rope is in wet condition. We actually spray salt water on the rope during the entire duration of the test. And only one... Uh, break is allowed during the test just in case the machine has got some issue or something like that. Otherwise, there is no break allowed also. Okay. So if you see here, the regular polysteel or anything like that, it breaks at around 1,100 cycles uh, at 80%. Whereas the new age ropes, the innovative ropes, they go more than 2,000 cycles. So essentially what has happened is now, the fatigue life has doubled. So, if you see the last two uh, bars, the green is the latest innovation rope. The fatigue cycles is almost 2400. The next base is the polysteel or maxima, which is most commonly used. That's around 1200 cycles. Okay. And therefore, logically, it should be longer usage life and therefore lower cost of ownership. Right? Because the fatigue life is so good. So with this, the X2, the innovative fiber was there. We mixed it together with polyester to have X2 Ultima. And all the advantages which I have spoken, downsizing and better fatigue life, it's all there. 
Okay. So moving to the XMP ropes. Uh, gentlemen, I know uh, quite the time has lost because of technical glitch. I'll be as fast as possible. Uh, sorry for that. Okay. So very uh, lightweight rope, same strength, same diameter as steel wire, but only one seventh of the weight. As we can see here, if I take 125 ton as the base load, uh, the HMP ropes will have to be only 97 kilos, whereas the steel wire will be approximately 800 kilos and the diameters are same, 40 millimeter. A regular row, it will be around 80 millimeter. So half, the rule of thumb is half the diameter as compared to steel wire, one seventh of the weight uh, as compared to the other synthetic fibers, one fourth of the weight. That's the rule of thumb. Okay. So it has got its own uh, advantages, but it's a costly load. Okay. So moving to safety on board. Two properties which we did, and many of the manufacturers are also doing. One is delayed snapback. And more importantly, how do I know the rope has got damaged and it should be changed on board, right? So there are multiple guidelines, but I can't go on the guideline and see every time I inspect the rope, right? It's almost impossible, right? So the uh, failure, etc. So I will not go into this uh, for want of time. So two innovations, delayed snapback and brake indication is what we did. Uh, gentlemen, I don't know if you can see a red uh, mark yeah. here on the video. Okay. So if you see here, there's an eight strand rope, regular variety. However, two of the strands and one sample is also on the table here for the people who are present here. This one. This one. Two of the strands are of different material. Okay. And this material breaks at a later date than the regular material. Okay. And the second advantage is we have, we have developed a special rope making technology so that there is a red yarn inside, glowing yarn. If the upper yarn gets cut like this, the inner yarn will be visible. Uh, just cross checking uh, with the captains who are uh, on the virtual screen. Can you see this red uh, near my finger? Or should yes. I read? Yeah, we can see it on your slide. On the on the slide, you can see. Can yeah, see on not, slide. Not, not your hand. We can see oh. it on the slide. Okay, great. Uh, oh, okay. So, so you can see. You can see. If the one yarn breaks, the yarn becomes visible. Okay. Now this is a preventive measure for safety. In the sense that the crew can spot this red mm -hmm. and then he can go to the chief officer or the chief engineer whosoever saying boss there is something different the radian has got visible yeah, so the okay, necessary yeah. uh, competent authority on board can take a call this is pp this is pp huh? this material the other two strands they are different of material okay now because i have a different material here we got it tested with a uh, uk lab and it showed us that four minutes is the time which is available for the crew to go away to a safer place okay however we said that this is too much of a scientific study on a lab scale 
like four minutes sounds too good to be true so what we did was we took this rope to a harbor and asked the truck to pull it okay and there are two distinct sounds unfortunately there is a technical glitch here so i am not able to show okay but there are the first six strands they break together these two strands will break at a later date okay, okay. and you can see a tug is pulling at such a fast speed in spite of that there is an approximately 6 second time between these strands breaking and this strand bit now 6 seconds is a huge amount of time for the crew to run to safety and with the speed of tug okay so this is what we are uh, this is what the innovation is okay now so you mean delayed snap back delayed snap back okay but in my understanding a 6 second is probably two plus a time since at, at the towing speed and talking about the speed, the speed at which we, it was given like a bollard pull you know a tug tug speed okay this is maybe the So this is the uh, the load is hundred percent on the rope. Hundred percent on the rope, and at a touch, you know, touch moving at a three and a half four knot speed. We we on purpose made it run as fast as possible, and this is done at Hazira. This test was done at Hazira Indian waters, just to see how fast it can happen. Okay. So this is on on board safety. Now the Indian. <laughs> rope and effectors and you are all indian so i can proudly say because this fiber has got lot more strength the x2 fiber here in this case there is no weight addition okay zero weight addition because i am not adding an extra material to this you know some of the rope and effector and that technology also is very good the 12 strand rope there's a core in between okay and then the rope just gives away that's also very good technology but there is a weight addition to that unlike here this is the same weight of the rope and i can give you the same strength because we have an innovative fiber the name india what's that fiber x2 what's the next x2 is It is a brand name, right? But then what? It's a polyolefin. The same material as the regular polystyl or a maxima row. No material change. The grade. What we have done is different variety of raw material mixed differently, processed differently, and that's the innovation. Okay. So we also have this towing ropes. Again, the same voice from customer, and for this we have done this X2 Ultra rope, and almost eighty percent of tugs in India are using this X2 Ultra ropes. Okay, But just to give a perspective, earlier ropes were used ninety-six millimeter in diameter, weighing five kilos to a meter. It has gone down to. 88 mm in diameter and 4 kg to a meter so you can imagine the faster uh, crewing time or the towing time which has been right okay so 18% uh, weight advantage over the ropes so this is the latest innovation which is being used quite often this is a soft shackle made out of hnt ropes strength as good as a steel shackle it can be made to any strength what is required and because it's a synthetic it won't rust etc etc and it's very easy also to handle just 1/7 of the weight and very easy to fix also 
to the picture on the right hand side is a soft shackle the towing assembly and the latest innovation which we will come very soon to you is better abrasion resistance and better bending fatigue so what we are talking about so as of now the project is under the name code name x15 it's the project code on the lap scale right now the bending fatigue is double and abrasion resistance improvement is 50% okay so i want to ask the master mariners here is the innovation process on the right track is this something which is exciting uh, as a master mariner to you bending fatigue double and abrasion resistance 50% better yeah definitely different yeah. things better but i guess the cost of things will be So again, the coming to the first yes. point regarding abrasion resistance. Yes. Basically, this is readily visible to any customer Absolutely. or any user. Yes. Even during the time of inspection, the first thing visible to any inspector would be the abrasion on the wall. Or uh, like if I go on board as a internal auditor, I will go and see this one. Sure. And then it will immediately pierce my eyes. Absolutely. Yes. Any particular probably we are not able to make out. Which yes. is again an invisible thing, and uh, we do not know when the ropes will, uh, how far the ropes are damaged and when it will take to it. Exactly, and that's one challenge as a rope manufacturer we have, and I'm sure my competitors will also have it. How to demonstrate? I can demonstrate on a lab scale, right? What we have actually done is we have taken a fair lead, put it on our machine. And then the ropes go back and forth on the fair lead, right? And we can measure the number of cycles at which it has broken, right? How to demonstrate to you on a vessel is always a challenge to us. Maybe you can give us an idea how to demonstrate to you on the vessel. Because we can't wait for five years to say my rope has lasted for five years, right? Transparency by sharing the video on the vessel. Okay. Okay, that we can do surely. Maybe I mean, you know, can I? Yes, sir. So it's actually, uh, I mean, uh, chafing which happens on board, you know, in dynamic condition, really on a ship, it does doesn't happen just doesn't happen because of back and forth movement. You know, it also happens under different loads. You know, I mean, uh, the one of the I mean, where I faced a lot of issues when I was selling as chief officer master way back in two thousand. So was there, you know, one of the ports in Rio Grande, in Brazil, where the the ports at the end of the river, where the ship is in constant motion, and she is in constant motion under different loads. So as the draft increases, your resistance to the water flow is going to increase, and mm -hmm. and the chafing is to take much earlier than what we can anticipate. So if exactly. you are doing this kind of test in the laboratory, mm -hmm. you know I am also myself a towing surveyor now in Dubai. So okay. I have seen the the condition of the equipment also on board vessel matters a lot. And the rope quality, you know, I mean uh, yeah. one of my one of the vessel which recently I did about two months back was was failed because the the she had a chafing edge cell on on board, you know. So so you can imagine, you know, there is already a structure which is going to chafe or cut the rope. You know, in a greater way than the rope strength. So these are the, uh, I mean, you know, dynamic issues on board. The different load. How would you, how would you do that in the laboratory? Great. Uh, so, uh, Captain Karanjikar, right? Okay. So thanks yeah. for this question. Uh, you know, uh, so I have two answers to it. One is if it's a chafing, and you know, the base metal or the fair lead is uh, not smooth enough. Right. Then we have multiple uh, shape cards. I have not included here in the presentation, but I showed to the uh, master mariners who are present here in the Mumbai office today. Okay, and I can uh, later uh, distribute the uh, 
necessary photographs. Okay, so one is the basic shaft resistance uh, material, and second, the back and forth at multiple loads. Exactly, this is what uh, we were talking about when we discussed the uh, TCLL or thousand cycle load level. I'm just going back to that uh, slide. Yeah. So when we are talking of the fatigue test here, this is what we are talking about. Taking the rope thousand times to a fifty percent load, thousand times to a sixty percent load, thousand times to a seventy percent load, and taking to eighty percent loads until it breaks. And what you said, uh, sir, is also very true because there is an empirical data that the damage caused because of thousand cycles at fifty percent load. Plus thousand cycles at sixty percent load, plus thousand cycles at seventy percent load. The entire damage with these three thousand cycles is equal to only one one three. That's hundred and thirteen cycles at eighty percent load. Mm -hmm. So, so you are very right, sir. You know the damage occurring at higher load is far far more on a row than at a lower load and. That that is where the fatigue life actually comes into picture. So thank you for that question, sir. I hope uh, I could answer uh, to your satisfaction. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, so that was my last slide. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, please do tell us if anything else we should innovate as a rope manufacturer to serve you better. Uh, we'll be more than happy to take up the challenge and work towards it. Uh, just, just one thing. I just like to interrupt. Uh, we will take the questions on the chat after the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so that was my last slide uh, on the innovation which is happening right now in the industry. And. Uh, uh, sorry for the technical glitch. I had present uh, made my presentation for thirty minutes, but uh, it's okay. Uh, questions uh, or comments? Welcome. Yeah, you can take. You can uh, unshare. And uh, there was somebody who raised his hands. Uh, can I? Uh, can you come out with your questions, please? Yes, sir. Uh, we are Captain Anupam. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good. Yeah, my question uh, is that. Uh, what all certification do you have? Like, you know, uh, when we get ropes on board, uh, is certified and tested under DNV test conditions. And, you know, there, there is certifying authorities who, who certifies those ropes. Yes. So do you have some kind of certification which, uh, you know, it, you just yes. uh, so previously all the asked? So hoses which how you can the factory for shipping industry, they are third party tested by LRA. Okay, so we have a question from one of the uh, person on the uh, Zoom. Please explain mixed moorings. Please explain mixed moorings. Uh, you got me? I can't get you. You are uh, you are to unmute. Okay. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, I'll come back to the question. Please explain mixed moorings. That's from uh, one of the audience. Okay. So a uh, mixed mooring could be. Uh, of two or three varieties. One is mixing of steel wire with synthetic fibers. Second is mixing of high elongation material with, say, HMT, which is a low elongation material. And the third could be mixing of materials of multiple rope manufacturers. Okay, while the breaking strength may be same the elongation characteristics may be different. 
just to give you an example uh i use a 64 mm polystick okay and then combine it with 16 mm of h2 ropes or vice versa you know because my entire vessel had uh, 60 mm of x2 ropes i went to some odd uh, port and i used a 64 mm of a polys right so the elongation differences uh may cause an issue okay at some places the ropes used are regular polystyrene types and some of the ropes are mixed fiber ropes polyester and poly in mixed together right the elongation characteristics will be totally different and uh, it could cause a issue in normal circumstances it could be also very smooth selling right but when the conditions are tough and this is where then the ropes strength actually come into picture right and this is where then it will cause issues and if we have faced such issues as a rope manufacturer multiple number of times are your rope got broke in the first voyage okay let's see what has happened is the other ropes were of high elongation material two of our coils and i'm sure most of the rope manufacturers must have faced this issue it's not only garwari most of it have were of some other issue because at that port at that time only those ropes were available okay so this is the mixed mooring uh, we are talking about i hope thank i have answered the question thank you uh, i got another question can you please repeat your comments on dynema rope he wants you to explain dynema rope okay great so uh, dynema ropes dynema is a brand name of uh, dsm now uh, purchased over by avian uh, another us company original dutch company uh, and the dynema is brand name for hmp fibers hmp is high modulus polyethylene fibers okay uh, garware has a brand name called uh, platina samson ropes has a brand name called amsteel blue okay so everyone has its own brand names uh the ropes are essentially the same diameter as steel wire and same strength as steel wire okay but elongation. elongation is also same as steel wire but the weight is only 1/7 as a steel wire rope okay the one cautionary remark which i made uh, when i was presenting the hmp fibers versus steel fiber was steel ropes when they are used for mooring they sag because of their self weight hmp ropes will not sag they will remain more or less straightened okay so even though the elongation characteristics of a steel wire and the hmp rope are similar they may behave differently while uh, in operations if they are used together okay unless the mooring master is uh, careful enough to have enough snag also on the hmp ropes like a steel wire rope but then that the human element comes in sometimes it may happen sometimes it may not happen because we are all are humans and prone to errors okay so therefore it is requested not to use the steel wire and hmp together uh any further clarification on hmp ropes or is that good enough thank you kishor uh, we have few more questions to take uh, do you have to customize your rope manufacturing as per ships sdmbl question mark do ship owners have to specially coordinate you for this so uh ropes have to be uh, defined by the sdmml of the vessel okay and that's a mandatory uh, requirement okay uh it, it's always better that uh, the ship management company or the ship owning company <laughs> is purchasing the rope if they advise the rope manufacturer on the ship parameters sdmml and other things it's all it will be helpful for the rope manufacturer also to give you the right uh, quality of the ropes yeah. 
so yes it will really be helpful and that's a mandatory requirement actually from the guidelines uh, mg4 for guidelines thank you kishor uh, we have another question how much is the price difference for your innovative products which you are coming up with from its prior generation of ropes so that the ship owner would like to buy it ultimately ships crew wishes to have smaller dia and weight ropes for easy handling great okay so uh, i am not a commercial man but i can give you a broad numbers okay the per coil price of the regular polystyrene rope and the downsized version of x2 rope they are not very far off maybe 2 3 5 percentage no 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 i am talking of a uh, single digit percentage uh, differences on the price on the price so it's not that just because it's a innovative rope i will charge it very high we are not doing that because we also know that uh, the shipping industry also goes through its troughs and crests okay and we cannot be an uh, exorbitant charger for that just help us yeah the price difference is less than 10% negligible price difference actually okay. thank you kishor per coil per coil not the per kilo price okay yeah yeah, yeah we have very few questions but we we'll try to take it as much as we can here is another question are the ropes in compliance with meg4 accepted by ocimf how many years of sea trial of these ropes completed are they tested on bollard abrasion crew training material provided for care inspection use of ropes along with supply of the ropes very few questions sir please okay so uh, the innovative x2 range of ropes they are almost 10 years now uh, into the sea 2013 is when the first rope went into the vessel and touchwood till date not a single issue has been reported either on the tugs or on the ship moorings okay are the mg4 certified yes they are mg4 certified are the i'm taking a corollary question are the tails made out of these ropes mg4 certified yes they are mg4 certified right uh okay we have somebody who just sort of missed the initial part of the lecture so uh uh okay no one before that is a uh, dynama product a material produced in india raw material no uh, uh, unfortunately no one in india produces hmp fiber uh dynama is a holland based company they have factories in holland as well as usa and now there are quite a few chinese manufacturers uh, some of them uh, not up to the mark some of them almost close to uh, dynama yarn quality uh, producing this there is one korean manufacturer also who makes hmp fibers uh, unfortunately not yet uh, in india but it took us it was a huge amount of capital uh, to be put in to put up that factory and as of now indian market is not uh, uh, giving that payback period and the interest rates in india are also quite high so the whole uh, maths is not working out right uh, okay i i did mention uh, there was somebody who missed the initial part of the lecture is there any technology that restricts the snap back when a mooring rope parts okay uh, so just quick recap so there are two technologies uh, being used one is from the western part of the world where in a 12 strand rope is there and they insert a core inside okay so that when the rope breaks uh, the core comes into picture the plus of that is or uh, it's a good technology no doubt uh the rope just gives stays there. stays there okay the second technology and that's an indian innovation it's on an eight strand rope the two strands like this here they are of a different material okay so the first six strands break and then the remaining two strands break the strands when they break they create a noise for the crew to run to safety 
and then the six strands, uh, the remaining two strands break. So these are two technologies available. This is the Indian innovation, and one is obviously the Western. So they are different MPL. They are different uh, material altogether. Uh, yes, it's there. Okay, we are quite down into the Q and A, but we will take the next three questions that are put up. If after this, if anybody would like any questions, they can send it to us, and we will get the reply back to you. Let's get back to the three questions. What difference it makes in the strength and longevity if the rope does sag or designed to avoid sagging for the users? It matters only how many years and how much strength it can sustain. Yes. Uh, the sagging part will come in picture uh, when you are having a mixed mooring, especially with the steel wire. Okay. Or if you are using a nylon rope with the regular poly uh, polyfin rope or a polypropylene rope, right? The <laughs> nylon rope will absorb water and then it will tend to sag. Okay. Only then the sagging part comes in. And yes, I agree. The rope should be strong enough and durable enough so that the cost of operations come down. Yes. And that's what we have been trying to innovate all along. Okay, the next question we come around is the OCMI standard environment criteria for new ships. How do we generate the wind slash current conditions? Well, sir, that uh, I'm not a ship designer. I'm a rope manufacturer. So that is for something for a ship designer and calculator uh, to work on this. It will be wrong on my part to comment on that question. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, of course, the audience has been thanking you for the questions. Uh, I'm taking just the last question. Since lots of innovation is in progress, material or elongation of the present rope in the market, say X2, will be replaced by some new innovative ropes probably after five years. And replacement in staggering manner would account for mixed moorings. What is the solution to this problem? which would occur again and again for ship managers? Uh, yes. <laughs> in, in fact, uh, that, that's a, that is a question which we had initially when we uh, came up with this innovative X2 fiber, right? So uh, some of our customers, what they did is when the ropes came in for changing, then they changed the entire lot. And that's how they got the most of the benefit uh, for it. There is a cost uh, associated with it, but yes, so the quality, the, the quality and cost, you know, you have to weigh for uh, both right, of it, to, and which, yeah. which comes in picture. And the most important point, sir, is uh, the cost per coil is not very exorbitant. Okay, it's almost same as the polystyrene. Okay, so some uh, people, though I'm not uh, very much favor, but Obviously, Master Maranas know a lot more than I know of the sea. They change the entire portion of the same forward first, then the aft in the second stage, or some uh, like that. Uh, it it uh, comes into mixed mooring, but uh, depending on uh, you know certain vessels, they could visit. So you, only, you can change the location by Yeah. So you know, so to so spring together, to rest together like that. Mm -hmm. So what I have been advised, okay, and I'm not a master mariner, so you know maybe all breast lines work together, so you change that. But yeah, that's, that's a but you know it becomes very dicey situation unless it's done properly under a supervision of a very good master mariner, and and not left to the crew, but it becomes very dicey in that case. So the human element comes too much into picture. Yes. And then too much of human element comes into picture in that case. So, you know, not in all rules are you know, serial numbered, or that is location wise, it's already marked. Yes. So, because all required by the wire measures, you know, so you have to have to make the running hours of the ropes. Exactly. Okay. So, that is very easy to, you know, so you can keep the press line together. So, this is this can be easily marked. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, see, one, one uh, point I would like to put in here. <laughs> the cost of ropes into the entire operation is maybe less than 0.5 percent. 
okay but the safety of the vessel is directly associated with the ropes right so, so also, please weigh uh, that into take that into account while taking the decision that's what i would put it this way so, so you are asking sir you also keep the control the price the vendors okay. like you are selling some price or vendor is giving some other price you know that that may be you know, no, no, uh, okay so uh, we have very loyal uh, channel partners trusted channel partners we work with them we don't work with uh, run of the mill channel partners if i have to put it this way okay however he has got his own business sometimes the channel partners play truant but uh, my colleagues here and the other colleagues uh, in the front line they do keep a timely check and ensure things fall in line yeah. immediately thank you so we still have few more i think yes. the questions are just dropping in maybe you have to stay one night and we won't allow you to do that but let's more than pick up a few more if the ropes is not used does it need to be discarded after certain years okay uh if the rope is stored uh, covered properly and stored away from sunlight it can last for ages okay oh. a polypropylene rope is 100% inert the only thing which will affect it is sun rays okay and heat okay yeah so the shelf life will be infinite unused unused unpacked kept away from sun and heat of course chemical wire and everything yeah no chemical affect uh, polypropylene okay polyester and nylon yes, yes but polypropylene nothing affects so you store it properly the shelf life is infinite technically okay. thank you kishor uh, we have uh, sometimes port or terminals have have a, have required to use aged ropes even if they are not utilized even in the lifetime i mean yes uh and that's more of a empirical data based yes we have noticed that uh, some port saying your uh, tail is more than 1 years old just discard it but you know that's individual port authority and as a rope manufacturer we can't really go and fight with the port authority right just, right just to give a quick example within india also uh, when the x2 ultra ropes were started getting used right many of the tug operators or the tugs extended the life of usage but certain ports they put their foot down one year over just change it okay so you know it's very difficult to argue with a port authority you know, on that matter okay thank you kishor i just want to tell you that uh, a lot of participants appreciate your presentation we we'll definitely will share this out and we'll upload it on the website uh i would uh, request uh, captain pramod kumar to give a small gift as a token of appreciation and you all can break off after that for your samosa tea coffee of course we will not have delivery a big hand to isho for an excellent presentation thank you you are most welcome to send your questions we'll always get back to you yes sir thank you kisho thank you very much for taking your time for coming all the way from pune for a subject yeah. that is very close to all the master mariners thank you very much yes and i will now uh, with the permission of master i will now invite uh, our secretary general captain bandarkar to please give the word of thanks captain bandarkar sir thank you sir thank you good evening to all of you good evening I think we have lost Captain Bandar. No, no, I am still here. Uh, yes. I would like to say thank you. Uh, uh, give my vote of thanks. Respected Captain uh, MP Basir, Master CMMI, CMMI office bearers, senior CMMI members, members of the shipping fraternity, and all the uh, participants. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to thank 
स्पीकर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट आर एंड डी गरवाले टेक्निकल फाइबर्स लिमिटेड एंड फॉर गिविंग अस इनसाइट इनटू टुडे लेक्चर ऑन मूलिंग रोप्स आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द मीडिया हु हैव एक्सटेंसिवली कवर्ड द इवेंट इंक्लूडिंग ऑल द सीएमएमआई इवेंट्स मैरिक्स सी जॉब्स भंडार का शिपिंग न्यूज सेलर टुडे पाई सागर संदेश and maritime destination special thanks to captain nangya for sailor today youtube and no program can become successful with a single person so i extend my big thanks to master deputy master secretary general uh, the encouraging support and enthusiasm of his staff sudhir kumar sudhir palkar for his support last but not the least we thank all participants without whom the webinar would not have been possible uh thank you very much uh, and i hope we have many more sessions uh, in future we have any questions we'll send it to you thank you very much thank you uh, uh thank you very much sir uh, before we close up i'll, I'll request if, if master has to say a, a few words before we actually close for the evening are captain sudhi kumar actually the last word should be captain uh, mr kishore today you know we all are actually using ropes all the time and today we became expert in knowing what is in our hands and i was really it was very very informative i am sure each participant today has gone with a very big knowledge and not only knowledge executive now we know what is in the rope and now we know whom to catch so mr kishore you are not going to get away with just one lecture now so people will send question to sudhi kumar for sure Yes, oh, my captain Basin, Captain Shashi Kumar, and I take the floor of CMMI to invite all the CMMI uh, master mariners to visit oh, our factory. We will be factory. more than happy yeah. to host you. You can come as a yeah. group, an individual, depending on your uh, availability. We will be more than happy to host you and show around the operations and testing. Where, where is your factory? Where is your factory? Pune. Pune. Oh, fantastic! Captain Shashi Kumar, see. don't lose a good offer. I think we <laughs> coordinate with them. Ask all the members which day is visible and which day is visible to Mr. Kishore. Let's go. I will come myself. I want to see. You know, yeah. when you are in school, school people should take to very many factories and many things as a, a knowledge correct, sharing. Correct. So it's better to go. Yeah, yeah, very good. More than I, I would like to add, Kishore. Uh, you know, we have yeah, lot Captain of, uh, Basin organized that uh, bus. Okay, oh, done. <laughs> okay, whole bus done. Kishan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are certain uh, there are few uh, sayings in English. Know your ropes, and you think I think you know we we as mariners uh, have had a very good session with you to know our ropes because uh, I had in fact some of my uh, the thing which one Karanjika asked somebody else asked what are mixed moorings you know. Uh, on board we always have situations when the port says oh one year old two year old and you can't argue with them exactly. <laughs> but today technology has changed even ports need to change <laughs> i think we it's a good thing that you know cmmi could probably uh, use this knowledge that you have provided thank you very much kishor darda thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all thank you once again thank you all. Thank for you very much. Uh, attending bye our bye. lecture thank you all sir and thanks for the patient here thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you thank you bye you. good night bye 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 bye